everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, with the help of a 3D printer, I'll try to repair a Commodore 64 that I received, where unfortunately some keys are broken, and I also want to replicate a Commodore 64 game cartridge that has also broke, but it's one of my first time using a 3D printer, and it's my first time trying to design a 3D model, so I'll ask ChatGPT to guide me to see if he can give me some helpful advices, and I'm really curious to see how many parts of the Commodore 64 I can replicate using the printer. I already have the key files as I found them on printables and other online libraries, so now I just need to open them in Prusa Slicer, the software to convert the file into G-code. This because most of the online libraries have files in STL format, and the 3D printer doesn't understand the 3D model because it needs to be converted into a series of instructions of the temperature, access movement, and other factors. The resulting file is called G code. Once opened in Prusa Slicer, I just need to press process. However, I'm not sure that the dimensions of the keys are correct, and also it's one of my first time trying a 3D printer, as I never had the opportunity to use one before the Prusa MK4, so I'm going to ask ChatGPT to help me, since recently you can also send pictures in the free version, and that will be useful for sure. This is the Commodore 64 I received, and as you can see there are some broken or missing keys and stands, so I'll print them, but unfortunately I don't have this brown shade of filament, so I bought a spray to get the original color. As for the function keys, they're not broken or missing, but I want to print them in orange to see how they turn out. But first I want to ask ChatGPT for some advices on printing in general, but specifically on printing small objects. Hi, I need to print the keys for a Commodore 64. Can you recommend what kind of filament is best for small and detailed objects like the keys or the key bases for the Commodore 64? Sure thing. So regarding 3D printing small objects like the keys of Commodore 64, both PLA and PG are good options. PLA is easy to print with, environmentally friendly, and has a smooth finish. PETG is durable and heat resistant, making it suitable for functional parts. For printing the keys, I'll be using PLA material, but unfortunately, I don't have the filament of the correct color, so I'll use a spray to obtain the color of the original keys. Do you have any suggestions? Could you recommend any paint or coating? Absolutely. I'd recommend smoothing or coating the keys after printing for a polished finish. Using a primer before painting ensures better adhesion. PLA, opt for a spray specifically for plastics to achieve the best results. So to summarize, levigate the keys, apply a primer, then use a suitable spray paint for PLA for a top-notch finish. Okay then, now all that's left is to follow ChatGPT advices and do a test print. The dimensions are wrong, it's slightly larger, and I want to change it using the Prusa Slicer software, and I also want to change the face support during the print, but since I've never used this software before, I want to ask ChatGPT to guide me. And I can also send a picture now in the free version, so I'll take a screenshot of the screen and then send it to ChatGPT and then ask for guidance. Hi, I would like to adjust the dimensions of the printed key, since it's too large compared to the original Commodore 64 key, and I want to do that using the Prusa Slicer software, so could you tell me how to do it and what dimensions should I use? And I would also like some suggestions on which face to support during the print in order to achieve a uniform print. Sure 
Sure, to adjust the dimensions in the manipulation groups window, set 18 for the X and Y axis and 14 centimeters for the Z axis. Then, to modify the face, navigate to the position tab and select the face in the left-hand tool to check both options to achieve the desired result. Let me know if you need any further assistance. The print turned out well and the dimensions are perfect. Now all that's left is to try if it works and it fits perfectly. So I'll just go ahead and print the other keys with the same process. So now I have everything I need to replace the missing parts and I'll open the case to work more easily with the keyboard. To start I'll insert the stem and luckily I keep broken keys and stems for this reason so that I have various replacement especially for the rubber pieces. Before inserting the keys though I'm going to varnish them as ChatGPT suggested. So first I'll sand them then I'll apply the primer and then the spray. The keys turned out well, but with such a dark color, the keys aren't very visible anymore, so I wanted to use acrylic paint to repaint them, but I'm not sure if they're suitable for this type of material. I printed the letters, painted them, but I can't see the letters very well, so what else can I use to paint them? Of course, to make the letters more visible on PLA, you can use regular acrylic paint to paint them white. Acrylic paint is suitable and should adhere well to the surface, helping to enhance the visibility of the letters. Just ensure the PLA surface is clean and dry before painting for the best results. The keyboard is like new, even though the keys I replaced are a little bit lighter compared to the original ones. And also, I wanted to replace the function keys to see if I could print this type of keys as well. Unfortunately, one of my game cartridges for the Commodore 64 broke, so I wanted to print a new one, even though I couldn't find any files I liked online, so I'll design it by myself. It's my first time using a 3D modeling software, so I asked ChatGPT to give me a brief overview of the software and to guide me, at least initially, in creating a cartridge for the Commodore 64. Fusion 360 is a design software developed by Autodesk, known for its versatility and widely used by designers and enthusiasts of 3D modeling. With Fusion 360, you can create, modify, simulate, and produce digital models of prototypes for utility items. The 3D modeling process typically starts with a sketch, which is a two-dimensional drawing that can be transformed into an object using various available tools. You can find the tools to create a sketch in the Create selection at the top level. If we were creating a cartridge, the next step would be to create a circle to represent the screw hole. This 
circle should be around one to three centimeters in size. Then create it in the create section. After that, you could create a rectangle also in the create section using the rectangle by two points tool. These two dimensional elements can be turned into three dimensional using the extrude function. You could create a protrusion of about two millimeters for the base of the cartridge, and then another protrusion of about 10 centimeters for the outer part. After completing one part of the model, lock the sketch and move on the next part. For example, if you finish the bottom or the top part, you can create another slightly smaller circle for the opposite part. Then rotate the model of 180 degrees using the copy and move function to duplicate the part you created for the side strips of the cartridge. You can use the rectangle and then use the extrude function to transform the recess by about 0.5 millimeters. This same example can be applied to create the support for the cartridge. Essentially, Fusion 360 Aw60 offers the necessary tools for transforming ideas into detailed three-dimensional models. I kept asking for some advice, especially related to the dimensions of the cartridge and some functionalities that I needed but I couldn't find them in the toolbar. I must say that with the new feature and the ability to upload a screenshot of the screen, even though it was my first time I was making a 3D model, I still managed to create a suitable print. For printing, you just need to upload the file to a USB drive after using the process slicer software to process the file. Insert the USB drive into the printer and there's nothing else to do but wait for the print to finish. For a case like this, it takes about 30 minutes. Fortunately, I have other cartridges, so by making a comparison, the sizes seems correct to me. I'll put the board in the new cartridge, and I got this from the one that is broken, and I also remodeled the label using Photoshop and printed it on another label. I'm happy that the Commodore is working since I hadn't tested it yet, and all the keys are made are making contact normally. I was mostly concerned about the keys where I made the stem to fit, because if the height was wrong they might not make contact, but there doesn't seem to be any issue. And now let's see if the cartridge works. And it lost the game, so the sizes were correct. I have to say ChatGPT gave me some really good advices and I was impressed. It was really helpful with the measurements of the buttons and the cartridge. And even if the Fuse 360 overview was a bit basic, I have to say that it's not the easiest software to begin with. But the possibilities with a 3D printer are endless. And even if you don't know how to use modeling software, there are tons of online resources that can help you realize a lot of projects. So let me know what you think in the comments, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.